Ever since the government actually extended their student loan pause to August 31st, SoFi stock has been down in the dumps because they actually had to change their fiscal 2022 earnings guidances to reflect this new pause extension. But if you've seen the channel before, you already know my opinion of SoFi stock, okay? I think it's a great company long term. Short term, we're gonna take a hit. But in this video, I wanna take the eight analysts that have actually updated their guidances to show this new student loan pause extension and actually see how their prices sort of correlate with the current price of this stock today. So let's just jump right into it, but the only thing that you'll have to know is that the current share price of this stock is actually $7.13, and we'll go through and actually compare their prices and the percentages of how different those are going to be. So our first analyst is actually going to be Dan here, okay? And Dan actually has a 52% success rate, a little bit over 1% uh, you know, average return on his picks, whatever, you know, it's still better than nothing. And, you know, his SoFi stock actually says there's actually going to be a $14 price range or a 96.3% upside if you're actually buying today. And what Dan has to say here is pretty enlightening as well. So he says, SoFi's guide down due to President Biden's student loan moratorium isn't surprising. The specter of an extension has been weighing on the stock for weeks. And this is true. That's actually why we've seen the stock go down a lot just recently in the short term, but it continues to go down even after we've already seen what we thought was going to happen, happen. But still, uh, he added to that while some investors might see the guidance change as a sign of other protectable weak spots, he saw no incremental weaknesses. Now, what this means is practically that the student loan moratorium extension, that was the big catalyst for why the stock was going down, and he doesn't see another reason for why this stock should go down. Now, I've said, and I've been called a, you know, someone who's pushing FUD or something along these lines, that I do think that the actual amount of member growth for this quarter coming up is going to be just a little bit over 300,000 people, okay? But I also think that that's priced in the stock as well. But regardless, what Dan has to say also pushes the stock, what he still thinks, even after the student loan extension and seeing no other catalyst for why this stock should go down, he still sees it almost double where it is today, okay? So what else are the catalysts that short sellers might see in this stock that's pushing it down even further? Aside from just macro market trends that might be pushing the stock down because of, you know, rising interest rates, for example, but even that should not cut the stock directly in half. Now, just jumping right into our next analyst, we have John here, okay? And John is actually rated uh, pretty well here. So he's rated 328th out of the 16,500 analysts that are total, you know, stock experts or whatever along these lines. But anyway, his success rate is actually 34% with an average return of 13.5% in recent history. And this man actually reviews a lot of stocks. I have to actually do some really good scrolling just to get down to SoFi, which he only did 12 days ago. But that being said, John has a very interesting take. He reviewed this 12 days ago. So the stock price wasn't actually much different from where it is today, and yet he's actually rating it at a $20 price range or 180% upside. So this stock has to go 180% up for him to actually, you know, tick off that this was a successful rating, and 64% of the time he's pretty right. So this is an extremely bullish, very hard prediction that he's making that he's really really trying to make here. So good for him. But on that same respect, he is the most bullish person that we're going to be talking about. And also there's no article for us to read on his most recent uh, actual analysis. You know, the only one that he does have is so far back that it's not actually, you know, displaying what the company is actually doing right now. What I'm really focused on is what's actually happening with the student loan pause and what do these analysts have to think about that specific guidance change. So that's it from our boy, John. But now we're actually going to be jumping over into our next analyst who is Dominic. Okay. And Dominic actually, Actually has just some average, you know, success rates. He's still doing well, good average return, but along the lines of SoFi, what he's predicting is actually a $13 price range or an 82% upside for this stock. Now, he does actually have some notes, but they're very, very lackluster. He's just saying that they're lowering their price target from $18 to $13, still putting on an outperformance rating, but then also just saying that the only reason why they lowered it is because of 2022 full year guidances given student loan moratorium extensions. So nothing very exciting. Price range is still not very exciting. Although, you know, whenever you compare it to the price of today, $7 still up to $13, 82% upside is still unbelievable. Now this next analyst that I want to talk about, we're actually going to be digging through his notes quite a lot. This is actually David here. Okay. So success rating, very, very average, average return, you know, just a little bit above what the actual market is doing. But now whenever we actually look at the SoFi, you know, what he has to say, a $15 price target over 110%. And he has a lot of great things to say in his actual, you know, report here. So whenever you see here, 
that he already had a price target of $20. They lowered it down to 15. He sees that this is being a temporary headwind, which is what I've been saying, okay? That this is very, very short term, but this should get better. So he's lowered the price target for now. You know, SoFi is going to hit a lot of roadblocks with student loan moratoriums, these sorts of things. But he's still bullish about the company's growth outlook, increased brand presence, and member growth and integrated uh, technology platform, which is, you know, Technesis and Galileo, that allows for a seamless cross-buying experience aimed at digitally native younger cohorts. David also spoke positively on SoFi's credit quality, noting that its borrowers are at the higher end of the credit spectrum, and he expects that SoFi's new banking charter will help the lender actually accelerate their earnings growth. Now, just at the bottom here, I just wanted to add in this as well. We believe SoFi's valuation is attractive relative to its growth perspectives, he wrote in the research note. Now, this is very, very exciting, okay? Because if you take the, like, the price to sales ratio of SoFi and compare it to Bank of America or JP Morgan, yes, the company still does look, you know, expensive. But the, the rate at which those companies are growing is nowhere near how fast SoFi is growing. You're talking about a company that during COVID and during these sorts of times were doubling year over year consistently okay? And now this, these rates are actually going to drop, but I still expect somewhere along the lines of around a 67% growth rate from just last year. So 67% versus the Bank of America's and the JP Morgan's of the world that are growing at low teens. You're going to have to pay some sort of premium for that sort of growth. And although he did actually take his price from $20 down to 15, that's still a $15 price target, okay? 110% higher than where it is today. That's just ridiculous. I had to put on some SoFi Blue to get through this next one. It's Betsy. She's always the most critical of SoFi, okay? She put it down to a $10 price range. She's also a very good analyst as well. You know, I've seen her do in a lot of other stocks that I like to cover, but 51% success rate, 6% average return. She thinks that there's going to be a $10 price range, okay? Which is still 40% upside. So the most bearish person that we're going to see tonight still sees a way outperformance versus any other sector in the stock market. No really other company should you expect a 40% return in a single year. That's like super high growth. And this is the most bearish person that we're going to talk about today. But looking at her actual report here, you can see that this analyst actually lowered her fiscal 2022 EBITDA by 42 million to a hundred million dollars, which is in line with the new guidance, okay? The analyst who thinks that a lack of government clarity about student loans, plus the potential for SoftBank board res resignations, will likely act as near-term overhangs on the stock. Keeps an equal rating on SoFi with a $10 price range on its shares. Now, I want to clarify some things, because you might not have known why they even brought up SoftBank or who even SoftBank is. Maybe you don't even know that. So SoftBank is actually a massive venture capitalist company with, you know, one of the biggest funds in the entire world called the Vision Fund. Well, anyway, SoftBank is SoFi's biggest investor. There's no one bigger, not Chamath, not any of the other, you know, Vanguards or BlackRocks or anything like this. It's SoftBank. If there's going to be some sort of disruption within SoftBank, they, they think that could be a potential for someone actually dumping those shares. And that could be a big seller for SoFi. I'm not actually one to know. What I do know is a very, very famous Warren Buffett quote, okay? Stock markets in the short term are a voting machine. Stock markets in the long term are a weighing machine. So it doesn't matter who's holding the shares, okay? A great company is a great company. Matter of fact, if this company actually gets so cheap and Warren Buffett starts to believe in it, it could be Berkshire Hathaway that picks up those SoftBank shares. But these analysts are not trying to predict where the actual, you know, company should be worth. They think that what this company is going to get to within the next 12 months. So that's sort of the difference here is that they don't actually, they can't really look at this stock as a long-term play for which I actually say it. What, what is this stock going to be like in five, 10, 15 years from now of Anthony Noto continuously having that compounding growth mindset that he's had that's taken us to where we are, not in terms of share price, but in terms of member growth, product growth, cross-selling, and acquisitions like Galileo and Technesis. Anyway, I went on a little tangent, but my next analyst is actually a pretty interesting one. So this is Meher, okay? He's actually the Bank of America Securities Research Team leader, and the reason why I actually know a little bit more about him is because he did a personal interview with Anthony Noto. I covered it on my channel, so you can double-check that if you want to see it if you haven't seen it already. I'm not actually in the video, I just did a supercut of the actual interview, but go check that out if you want to see it. Anyway, 
Back to this actual analyst report. So what he actually did was he put a $12 price target on this stock or a 68% upside. By the way, his success rating, 47%. Average upside, a little over 11.9%. Uh, so, and he does actually have some notes, although very, very, very basic, okay? He just went from saying that they actually had a $14 price range, lowered it down to $12. This is because they lowered their revenue in EBITDA and is actually claiming that, you know, SoFi guidance assumes loan forbearance is extended throughout the end of 2020. So not just August 31st, but all the way through the year, okay? And this is why that he's actually dropping the price a little bit, but still, he, no one even mentions to be, why are we continuing to drop all the way down to $7? No one's, you know, sort of mentioning any other catalysts aside from just this one thing, which should already be priced into the stock. If we remember from what Dan said that these sort of pressures have been put on us for weeks, it's why the stock had been crashing even before Joe Biden had even pushed those extensions. So why are we still seeing the stock go down other other than potentially macro issues for which, you know, we might actually be outperforming other stocks in the stock market in terms of lowered amounts of performance, but still, you know, across the board, we're seeing one big catalyst that this price is, a, you know, the price of the stock might be a little oversold, at least in terms of these analysts. Next up on our list is actually Ashwin, okay? I actually think that I've covered him on my channel before, potentially other stocks that we might have in common as well. Uh, who knows? But anyway, the success rate, very, very good. Another great average return. But in terms of his SoFi price, he puts it at $17 a share. This was 10 days ago, okay? Not months ago, 10 days ago that he's saying that this stock should actually be nearly 140% higher than what it is today. And in his notes, he's very, very clear, okay? While the stock will likely be negatively affected in the near term for student loan moratorium extensions, the value of SoFi derives not from this year's EBITDA, but from the creation of the flywheel which pulls in high earning members via financial services and monetizes them via lending from the underlying positional strength in tech services. Isn't that like poetry? That's like poetry of what SoFi should be, right? I, I even wanna say it again. The value in SoFi derives not from this year's EBITDA, but from the creation of the flywheel which pulls in high earning members via financial services and monetizes them via lending and from underlying positional strength in tech services. Mwah, that's such a beautiful line. I, I almost want to make like a phone background for this so I could stare at it every day or a poster or something. But anyway, that's Ashwin, a poet of our modern day, you could say. But our next analyst is actually going to be Eugene. And now Eugene actually doesn't have the best, you know, success rate or average return. I can see why the companies that he's covering, Affirm, New Bank, SoFi, Toast, Lightspeed, all these stocks are just getting crushed in recent history. And I mean, his most, like all of his <laughs> ratings, except for one was just 13 days ago. So he's quite new to this um, or potentially with this company. But in his notes, he actually brings up something pretty interesting. So he actually talks about his other company here, Newbank and SoFi, how they're both disrupting financial services, but in two different markets. The low to, med the low to medium income demographic in Latin America for Newbank, and then the high or the medium to high income demographic for United States in SoFi. So whenever we tally up all those different price ranges, $14, $20, $13, $15, $10, $12, $17, $13, that gives us an average price range of around $14.25 from our analysts, okay? That is nearly double, 90, 99.86% upside from where it is today at $7.13 at the at the time of recording this video. And just one more thing, because I just was going to make a separate video of that, but I'll just stick it in here, that SoFi is still continuing to up their offering whenever people sign up for direct deposits. For example, SoFi is now giving away 3% on their credit cards for the first year whenever people sign up, then it goes down to 2%, and you can actually spend up to $12,000 in your first year at getting 3% back on everything. Along with the $300 bonus and everything like this, I cannot wait to see what the average revenue per user is on these new direct deposit clients. I think that's going to be the big talk of Q1 earnings call. I'll be covering it. There might even be a special video. I might be talking with other creators of potentially covering Q1 earnings results. So, but I'm not the only one who really, really likes SoFi right now as SoFi actually received a buyout offer. I made a full video about it. So go check it out. And if you haven't already on this video, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe down below if you want to see more financial content just like this.